<laughs> That's Felix Baumgartner. Today's podcast is pretty exciting. No! It's about Felix Baumgartner's jump in the Red Bull Stratus project. Science of jumping from 127,000 plus feet. Now, as we were watching this broadcast, I was thinking, man, there's probably an infinite number of science concepts that we could be talking about. But today, I'm only going to be talking about three that are integral to Felix surviving a jump like this. Now, the first one has to do everything with the balloon. The boy, up! In fact, it's all about buoyancy. 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 Just like water is a fluid, where most people think about buoyancy, the air is also a fluid. So I'm sure you've all seen a helium balloon released that starts heading off into the atmosphere. Now, of course, if it doesn't blow up, when does that thing stop? Well, it stops at float altitude. In buoyancy terms, floating happens when the downward force exerted by gravity is equal to the buoyant force. Essentially, that means that the weight of the balloon, the capsule, the helium, all that together is equal to the weight of the displaced air. The next concept I want to talk about is this idea that your blood could boil if you stepped out of a capsule at a really high altitude like that. Boiling point. Boiling point. Now basically the concept stems from the idea that water boils at different pressures. And you can represent that in a graph like this. And you can see that when you're at the pressure of sea level, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And that's what everybody learns, right? And you can find out what pressure water boils at body temperature. And that's when your blood might start to boil. Now, I quickly did this calculation before I watched the live broadcast of the Red Bull Stratus project, and turns out, didn't know about this, it's actually the Armstrong line. Go figure, it was a number they had already calculated out, and it was about 63,000 feet. Of course, that line varies up and down a little bit because it all depends on pressure, not altitude. And the pressure can change a little bit in this fluid, right? Now, Felix Baumgartner is going almost twice as high as 63,000 feet, so that's pretty darn high, and obviously, very dangerous, and that's why he's in a pressurized suit. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about is the speed of sound. Speed of sound. Speed of sound. Now he jumped out and quickly got to the speed of sound, so he ended up peaking out at 834 miles per hour, which is super fast. Now, they said that that's Mach 1.2, and if you do the calculations, that means they said that the speed of sound up there is about 695 miles per hour. And if you know anything about the speed of sound down here on Earth, you wouldn't say 695 miles per hour is the speed of sound. In fact, I did the calculation. If it's a nice hot day, the speed of sound at say 90 degrees Fahrenheit is about 786 miles per hour. Now, I included the temperature there because the speed of sound actually depends mostly on temperature. You see, you can plot the speed of sound relative to altitude, and you can also plot temperature relative to altitude, and those two match up almost perfectly. But then again, by any measure of the terms, 834 miles per hour totally across the speed of sound, which is pretty awesome. Now remember, we've got videos on all sorts of science concepts up here, so check them out and subscribe to our feed.